This is a series on Embedded Linux with Yakutov project. Subscribe to the channel to learn more about Embedded Linux and its related technologies. This video is about building OSS packages from source. Building open source software packages. If you have built open source software packages for a Linux host system before, you may have noticed that the workflow follows a specific pattern. Some of the steps this workflow you execute yourself, whereas the others are typically carried out through some sort of automation such as make or other source to binary build systems. So these are the steps that you would take. The first step is fetch, which means obtain the source code. The second step is extract, unpack the source code. Third is patching. Apply patches for bug fixes and other added functionality. The fourth step is configure. Prepare the build process according to the environment. The fifth step is build, compile and link. The sixth step is install. Copy the bin binaries and auxiliary files to their target directories. Seventh step is package. Bundle binaries and auxiliary files for installation on other systems. So these are the steps that you would take when building in open source packages. Well, let's see all of these steps in a little bit more detail. First step is fetch. Typically, open source packages have a download area from where the source code, source code together with instructions documentation and other information can be downloaded in the form of an archive which commonly is also compressed of course each open source project has its own url to access its website file servers and downloaded area some projects may also provide access to re released versions and development branches of the source code from a source control management system such as git subversion and more so commonly sources obtained from remote locations such as download sites or repositories may be supplemented with patches and auxiliary files that are sto stored on a local file system so here it means that normally uh, the source code for the package would contain in a downloadable location or in a git or any version control system and you would also have its patches available in the uh, in the same location the next step is extract after source code is downloaded it must be unpacked and copied from its downloaded location to an area where you're going to build it typically open source Packages are wrapped into archives, most commonly into compressed tar archives, but CPIBO and other formats that serialize multiple files into a single archive are also used or in use. The most frequently used compression formats are gzip, bzip, but some projects utilize other compression schemes. So normally when you uh, when you download the packages, you would uh, source code of the package you would see in the gzip or gzip, bzip. So these are the formats that you will find. Well, if you download the git repository, you will have the not as a uh, compressed format. It will be available as uh, what to the proper source code. Uh, in their git repositories and you can clone it the which of the branch that you want the next is patch patching is the process of incrementally modifying the source code by adding deleting and changing source files there are various reasons why source code could require patching before building first is applying a bug security fixes this is one of the reason then Second reason could be adding functionality. The third reason could be providing configuration information. The fourth 
reason could be making adjustment for cross compiling and so forth so these are the typical reasons why a source coordinates a patching before building it applying a patch can be as simple as copying files into directory structure of the source code so commonly patches are applied using patch utility which takes a patch file as input that has been created with the diff utility diff compares an original file with a modified file and creates a differential file that includes not only the changes but also metadata such as name and patch of the file and the exact location of the modifications and the context so this is basically how a patching is done where uh, the patch file would be created using the diff uh, utility and then that patch file the extension normally is dot patch and you will use this file to patch the source code and you'll have to take care let's say if you have multiple patches for the same package you'd also have to patch it in accordance with the, uh, the i would say there would be a sequence of patching otherwise the patching process will not be correct and then you will have issues during the build or could be the build would be fine but you'll have undefined behavior the next step is the configure config step providing a software package in source code form serves among others the purpose that users can build the software themselves provide range of target systems with variety comes diversity requiring the build environment for the software packages to be configured appropriately for the target system accurate configuration is particularly important for cross build environments where the cpu architecture of the build host is different from the cpu architecture of the target system many software packages now use gnu build system also known as, known as auto tools for configuration auto tools is a suite for tools aiming at making source code software packages portable to many unix like systems auto tools creates a configure script from a series of input files that characterize a particular source code body through a series of processing steps configure creates a make file specifically for the target system so here what is important to understand is there are certain configurations that needs to be done before we build any package this could be with the host system or it could be during the cross compilation if, if you have seen my videos on linux from scratch you would know that we build the whole linux system from the source code so there you would actually see that how we use other tools to configure the linux kernel the kernel source code the building the linux kernel and the other configuration like it could be plain executing the, the plain dot conf file so that's how the configuration is done and with the different parameters that you need to pass for the configuration to do configuration according to the system the target system that you want to build for well, the next step is build so the vast majority of the software packages utilize make to build binaries such as executable program files and libraries as well as auxiliary files from source code some software packages may use other utilities such as cmake or qmake for software packages using the qt graphical libraries so this this step is basically uh, executing the make file with appropriate uh, the arguments The next step is install. The install step copies binaries, libraries, and documentation, configuration, and other files to the correct locations in the target's file system. 
So program files are typically installed in user bin and for user programs it gets installed in the user s bin for system administration programs libraries are copied to user lib and application specific subdirectories inside user lib So configuration files are commonly installed in the etc directory the install utility can also set a file ownership and permissions while copying the files so this is very important uh, for the security reasons the last step is a packaging so packaging is the process of bundling software binaries auxiliary files into a single archive file for distribution and direct installation on a target system Package packaging can also be as simple as compressed tar archive that the user then extracts on the target system for convenience and usability most software packages bundle their files for use with installer or package management system So Linux system commonly rely on a package management system that is part of the distribution rather than using self-combined installation packages. So advantages are that the package manager as a whole only instance maintain, maintains the software databases on system and that the software packages are smaller in size because they do not need to contain the installation software. However, the maintainers of each Linux distribution decide on its package management system, which requires software packages to be uh, packaged multiple times for different target systems. The most commonly used package management systems for Linux distributions are the RPM package manager. So RPM means the Red Hat package manager. The, the second type, which you normally have, which you normally see is dpkg this is debian package management program so this basically you see on the on on more on a uh, debian distributions the ubuntu is also comes under debian like distribution so you'll see the packages then the third form is itsy package management system ipkg so it has gained popularity for embedded devices ipkg is a lightweight system that resembles D package. And OPKG, which has forked from IPKG by OpenMoco project, OPKG is written in C. It is relatively maintained. It is actively maintained by the Octo project and used by OpenEmbedded and many other projects. So these are different package managers. So one of the advantage with uh, package managers is that it downloads all the dependencies that is required to install any uh, package so with that manually finding the dependencies and installing will be much more easier with the package manager install and packages are not necessarily sequential steps and they are also optional if you're building a software package for local use only not for not for redistribution there is no need to package the software and if you are a package maintainer and create a packages for redistribution you may not need to perform steps to install the software packages on your build system so the steps outlined here are essentially the same whether you're building a software package natively or performing a cross build however you must understand sorry you must consider many intricacies when setting up and configuring the build environment and building the package building the package for a cross build so well so these are the steps that typically when you typically you need to do before or for building open source software package so having this knowledge we understand this what are the different uh, steps that are needed and in future you will in the future video you will also see that 
these are the exact steps that the Yakta project does automatically for all the different software packages that needs to be built for your image and that's where the that's where the Yakta project brings a lot of value into because building each package from source is very a tedious task which you can understand uh, if you see my uh, the video series on the Yakto, not the Yakto, the video series on uh, the Linux from scratch, how tedious building a Linux distribution is. But if you use Yakto project, it makes your life simpler. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you in learning, Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, share with anyone who is interested to learn more about embedded Linux and Internet of Things. Leave a comment below for any feedback or discussion.